I'm Mr. B and today is my day off. Okay, that's okay though. I'm still here to teach you guys some things. I have my $400 Jetta here and as I'm going through the diagnostic processes of getting it back running and, and running correctly again, I have to test the fuel. So today on my day off, I'm coming in and I'm showing you guys how to test the fuel in your vehicle. So why would we want to test fuel in a vehicle? First of all, if we are trying to diagnose a vehicle and nothing seems to be making sense as far as our readings or man, this thing should be running, everything else is right, then we need to test our fuel. If the car has been sitting up for a long time, over six months or so, we need to test the fuel. If you just bought a car, you don't know what, what's going on with it, where it's been, anything like that, we need to test the fuel. So today, I'm going to show you how to test fuel for ethanol content, or what we call water-soluble content, okay? So again, coming in on my day off, so y'all have to like this video and y'all have to subscribe because I'm doing this for you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and take this fuel sample and I'm going to put it in what we call a graduated cylinder. It is a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. You can get these from anywhere. Um, garden supply places have them as well for mixing up fertilizer and things like that or you can order them online also amazon and ebay have the test kits that have the little beakers that already are are marked for what i'm about to show you how to do those will work fine as well as long as you get something to test this with and again anybody can do this this is not difficult all it takes is a little bit of measurement and a little bit of patience and here's how you do it okay so i have my graduated cylinder here i have a rubber stopper to go in here you can use your hand of course to to stop this from getting out while we're agitating this so and i've got just a bottle of purified water room temperature is fine so i have this on the 90 milliliter mark let me see if i can get the camera to focus in here 90 milliliter mark and what i'm going to do is i'm going to add water to this now the water of course is going to sink to the bottom because water is heavier than fuel but I'm going to bring this up to the 100 milliliter mark just a little bit at a time let's see just a little bit more that's about right on the money okay so now that we have we have nine parts fuel and one part water. So if you've got anything else that you're putting this in, if you just mark 10 equal segments and put nine of them fuel and one water. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my cap on. Good. And I'm going to agitate or shake this up and make sure this cap's in good and make sure that it blends well with the gas and I am just going to let this sit for about 10 minutes and let the fuel separate again from the water. And what this will do is the water will draw out the ethanol or anything water soluble in the fuel. And as it does that, the percentage it leaves will be marked as anything between 10 milliliters and up in water. And I'll show you that when it separates here in a second. Okay, so I've given this some time. And as you can see, this water level is about right here, which is probably the 19 or so. So it's 19 milliliters. So we take the 10 away from the 19 and we'll get 9 milliliters of something that's water soluble in your fuel. So whether it be ethanol, any type of additive or whatnot. And so that would put our level at about 9%. So anything above 10% we're, we're seeing may be problematic. So this is close to being problematic, but it shouldn't really affect the way the car is running. Uh, but again, if you've got a car that's very low tolerance, it's a very high tolerance car, it's just a two liter uh, single overhead cam. So there's not a whole lot of compression problems or anything with these cars ever. And they can pretty much run on you know 87 octane. But if, if you've got a car that has 
some, you know, very picky on fuels, uh, you, you may want to change your fuel out if you run into something this high to a, a octane free fuel, which is kind of hard to find, but it is out there. So real easy. Again, I'm gonna go over this real quick. Put your fuel on the 90, then fill it up to 100 with water, shake it out, let it separate, and anything between the, from the 10 milliliter up is going to be what was drawn out of the fuel and therefore what we count as contamination. Okay, everybody, that does it for today's episode of, remember when we're talking about fuel, you always want to get the highest quality fuel that you can for your highest quality car that you have. Okay, so I recommend top tier fuelers. If you want to look that up, you can. It's, you can easily Google it. Uh, but all my vehicles get top tier fuel. You want to make sure that you're putting in the correct grade. You want to make sure that if you're having a car sit, like a lot of you guys are from up north, if you're having a car sit all winter long, you put some gas stabilant in there to make sure that the gas doesn't go bad over the winter. So again, test gas. If, if when in doubt, test it out. It's very easy to do. It only takes you about 10 minutes. And if you have bad gas, it can really lead to your diagnostic going off the rails. So that does it for us. Uh, we are on Facebook. We are on Facebook under Car Sparks with Mr. B on the page there. I'm always posting some funny stuff on there. Also, we 